Hi there, I'm very excited to be with you today and I want to tell you about our research into entanglement and in order to do that I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Okay, so my name is Sue Sayer and I'm from the Seal Research Trust in the UK and because of my passion for grey seals I get to do an awful lot of amazing things in amazing places with some fabulous people. I always have to thank our funders. I'm a full time volunteer, but we're training up the next uh, generation of marine conservation leaders. Uh, and this is how we fund it through our uh, generous uh, funders. Uh, our fundamental philosophy is that of the Ecozoic, where we want everyone to share their seeds successfully and appreciate that we are one species in a planetary ecosystem upon which we depend for our survival. In order to do the work that we do, we send all our data and give SEALs a voice with statutory agencies and NGOs uh, nationally and internationally. And across our region, we partner with lots of other organisations in order to spread messages further. Our patron is Gillian Burke, who is the BBC Springwatch presenter, but our most precious assets are our volunteers who have given over the years hundreds of thousands of hours of volunteer citizen science time to give SEALs a voice. We do photo ID work across the southwest region of the UK from South Wales all the way through to Dorset. And in 2021, we had an utterly amazing year with lots of information from different people, 14 surveys every single day right the way throughout the year. We did 13,000 plus IDs and we had 134 different unique entangled animals. We did lots of engagement work as well with the general public. But as you will be familiar, it's all change, climate, biodiversity out there and seals have no control over their environment. The Cornwall Wildlife Trust Marine Strandings Network across our region records dead creatures and the data for seals has been quite alarming since 2000. In 2021 there were actually 283 dead seals. That could be a reflection of more seals across our region but equally we have some concerns. This is a six-year-old male who is by far not an not uh, an exception. We have a lot of, of adult males dying in their prime and their teens in the southwest region. So we are concerned. All of our data is shared with the uh, government statutory agency Clean Catch UK, who define uh, bycatch as dead bycatch in live operational nets, as well as live entanglement in lost gear. So this is what a dead bicourt seal looks like. You'll all be familiar with this. And according to DEFRA's data in 2015, 300 dead seals, 310 dead seals were bicourt around our region in that single year. So the Sea Mammal Research Unit are the government agency who provide data on bycatch. And as you can see, here are the figures from 2012, 370. Uh, bicourt seals were estimated around the UK up to 510 in 2015. The most recent paper, however, from 2020 is very concerning to us. The total number of bicourt seals around the UK was 474, but what shocked us was that 85% of entanglement, sorry, 85% of bycatch around the UK uh, occurs in our region and that this exceeds the permitted biological removal, so is likely having a population level effect. So this is Lucky Star. Um, you will be aware that we published a paper in 2012 showing that we had the second highest rate of entanglement for any fossil species anywhere in the world. And these four photos in the top right hand corner show how entanglement occurs. Entanglement in addition to dead bycatch. Uh, basically, the seals will interact curiously with anything they find in the marine environment and their panic response is to spin. So they will get caught up. Any part of them gets caught up, they'll spin and then they cocoon themselves up in material, which is hideous. These two photos show because uh, Lucky Star was rescued, what his wound looked like on the day of rescue. And 17 day days later, he had sealed up and looked considerably better. This is a dead entangled uh, heron with a heron chick. So entanglement doesn't just affect seals, obviously, but it also entangles other creatures as well. What was interesting about this particular case was that there was angling gear and hooks, but also a chafe gear from a trawl net. So it was commercial fisheries as well as angling. 
But what we do with our photo ID work is provide case studies and wound progression. So this is an adult female legs who I first saw entangled and thought stupidly that she would be OK because she has a small amount of monofilament around her neck and no growing to do. But within three weeks, uh, her cheese wire entanglement noose had cut right the way through her very strong cross collagen fibred skin. And she now had a wound right the way around her neck. Within a very short period of time, she uh, had this wound and this is what she now looks like, a hideous welfare issue for a beautiful adult female. Uh, basically, Legs' story is here. In 2012 um, to 2022, years across the top, months down the side and colours reflect the sites where she was seen. She was entangled at the star um, date here in in January 2019. She is still going strong with that hideous wound, but we haven't been able to rescue her, which is devastating. But it's important to be able to tell her story. This seal was much more unlucky. It's a young adult male. This is a photo of him before he was entangled. This is what he now, or rather, this is what he looked like in the last live photo of him. And this was him photo dead and decomposing. He had a very small amount of monofilament around him. And all we can say is that the amount of time that it took for him to die was a minimum of three to four months and a maximum of two years. We haven't been able to pin it down any more than that. So if you're familiar with the paper we published in 2012, you will know that our entanglement rates in the southwest were three to five percent, although higher if you just looked at our photo ID catalogues. 64% of the animals we saw had severe injuries and 60% of them had trailing material, uh, more of that later. We also published a, a report for uh, World Animal Protection in 2015 based on a lot more surveys and uh, showed that most of the animals we saw were actually adults in moderate and well-nourished condition. Most of the entanglement was around the neck. Out of the 262 different entanglement, entangled animals we had during that period, 92 had visible gear, 81 had trailing gear, 208 of the animals had severe constrictions and trailing gear was shown to be statistically significant in reducing their survivorship. All but one of the visible material was fisheries related and we are assuming that this is having a population level effect. Other information from our photo ID work showed during postmortems that uh, skin and flesh was able to heal over the wounds, which was really quite surprising and very horrible. It could kill rapidly in less than 89 days. That movement alone, in this case, as well as in legs, was enough to um, cause the cheese wire effect and cut right the way through their skin. Obviously, it's a hideous welfare issue that can affect reproduction and that these wounds will seal and heal quickly if rescued. But this is the new data from 2021 that we were keen to share with you. You're the first people to see this. Uh, so in uh, 2021, we had 811 records of entangled animals on 357 surveys. We saw 10 entangled animals on the same survey at least 12 times and we had 18 unique identified animals in a single survey that was the maximum we saw in 2021 and we identified 134 unique entangled animals so the entanglement rates that we've seen have stayed pretty constant uh, it was actually down in 2021 but they've been pretty constant over the decade but you can see from 2014, we might have had a step jump in 2016 and potentially a step jump in 2021. Mm -hmm. So this issue is not going away. This was Lucky Star on the day that he was first identified by us. And you can see he is sniffing and looking around and then he spotted people on the clifftop. So his first response was to go back in the water. Unfortunately, this happened multiple times and it actually took British Divers Marine Life Rescue and us four months to rescue him by the time he had a hideous wound. In contrast, this is monofilament net from uh, lost gill net gear, static gear. And I don't understand why a young animal like this would still make the huge effort to get out of the sea, despite having all this trailing gear. 
The animal does seem to be choking a little as it's coming out, but you can see because it's uh, hauling over the gear itself, it's actually uh, making it harder and pulling the gear in at the back of the neck and away from the throat. So sometimes we see animals with hideous wounds at the back and nothing at the throat. And we think this is indicative of trailing gear. We've got some emerging issues as well, hooks and flying rings. So in 2018, these three different animals were all hooked within a month in one of our harbors. And in 2019, this particular seal called Trunk was unfortunately hooked four times in the space of three months. Why is this happening? Well, because the mackerel fishery is moving later and we also have phenology changes in our peak haul out season, which has moved from April back to December. And now we have a spatial and temporal overlap between this fishery and our peak haul out season. The impact of this, well, this is a young malted pup and unfortunately interacted with gear. This is actually coincidentally also an entangled uh, seal with hideous wounds underneath its neck. But this young malted pup is still able to move, but you can see its hauling action is impeded. It will be taking more energy as a result of this, but it can't extend its right flipper, which means it will potentially also have issues when it's swimming. The wounds are not yet visible, but, you know, whether this poor pup who is in the process of trying to teach itself to feed will do so successfully when it's got such an appalling, um, you know, disability as a result of this hooking uh, in mono in the in the mackerel gear. Flying rings are also an issue. I know it's not fisheries related, but I wanted to share it with you as an audience. All of these rings were removed from a single beach in Cornwall in two years. We have lots of resources if you want to find out more and help spread the word on this particular issue uh, to help our campaign. Tesco's and Pets at Home, which are two big retailers in the UK, have removed flying rings from their, from their shelves, which is great news. Warning, graphic image coming up. This is an adult female on the east coast of the UK that presumably died as a result of a flying ring. But I wanted to finish with a really positive story, a photo ID project of one seal who uh, has a positive ending. So I went out on a routine survey one day, early one morning, and when I saw this seal, my heart sank into my boots because I knew that if I didn't ring British Divers Marine Life Rescue to get them to help and coordinate a rescue, that animal would die. So this is us. I'm wearing a head cam, uh, abseiling into um, this particular survey site with my partner who's doing the rope safety and Dan Jarvis from British Divers Marine Life Rescue, who's much faster at running than I am. I was hoping to cut the animal off if, he, if it legged and uh, Dan wasn't able to get to it, but to cut it off before it got to the sea. But Dan's fortunately much faster than me. He's also a very experienced seal handler. And unfortunately, I am less experienced at a cutting net from an animal. We now use different gear to cut recurve knives that are much sharper and much more effective at removing gear like this. I always find it interesting that animals stop struggling as much when you uh, a cover their eyes, but also seem to release the pressure around their necks. Uh, Dan managed to uh, spray the animal with a barrier spray to help reduce infection. And then we just let the animal go. Uh, all I could say during this rescue was, oh, my word, it stinks. But the story continued. So this was rescue day. This was in a very short period of time. And you could see Lucky Bunting had sealed and healed up effectively. She put on a growth spurt then because we think that entanglement might inhibit their growth. Uh, James Barnett from the Cornwall Marine Pathology team will be publishing a paper about that, we hope, shortly. She then had in 2018 for five boyfriends, one, two, three, four, five. She mated with the fifth. This was new science because we didn't know she would mess around with multiple boyfriends uh, before she had the chosen one. However, her hormone trigger didn't kick in because she had a sixth boyfriend before she stopped messing around with boys altogether. We tracked her for the next few months from inshore to offshore sites. And in September, um, she didn't look that pregnant, but she had an adult male mushroom in attendance who made it very clear to Harry the diver uh, this is very clear back off body language as a barrier between him and Lucky Bunting. But seal society is female dominated. So she came up to explore Harry anyway. 
We didn't see a pup in 2019. However, we did see one in 2020 and in 2021. So we now have everything crossed that she'll successfully wean a pup in 2022 as well. The solutions, you know what they all are. They're to reduce, reuse, recycle, redesign, reorganize and replicate the projects that are successful. The Global Go Ski Initiative is utterly crucial in making this happen. But we also partner with World Animal Protection and the Pinniped Entanglement Group to try and make this possible. Fishing for litter schemes uh, happen in the UK, supported by other charities. Fisherman Kisses was a project by Cornwall Plastic Pollution Coalition to discourage the discarding of little bits of net into the marine environment. But the ultimate solution will be fisher training in ecosystems so they understand the impacts of the effects that they are their activities are having on the whole marine ecosystem. And if we can persuade fishers to participate in beach cleans, they will then begin to understand why this is such a big issue for all of us and a massive welfare issue for seals. So thank you for listening. I hope that you found it interesting. I do not want the stories of all these entang entangled animals to be lost. We need all need to give these animals a voice because this is a hideous welfare issue. Hope it's been informative, hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope in the future you will consider supporting us. We have an online shop, we have a wild seal supporter and adoption scheme, and we take donations. And those are the three main ways that we support and fund our marine conservation leaders of the future. Thank you very much. I'm hoping that I've done this in uh, real time for you, but if not, I hope you've enjoyed the recording. Thanks very much. Bye.